Hey guys, how you doing? And welcome finally to Gran Turismo Sport. Now to kick off this game on my channel, I wanted to drive one of my favourite cars in the world. It is the Lexus LC500. I have been drooling over this thing ever since it was a concept with the LFLC. Um, this is essentially just the concept but a road going version, it looks drop dead gorgeous. But feel free to let me know in the comment section below what other cars you want me to drive in this game because there is a lot that I want to get through. And if you are new around here guys then make sure you subscribe and hit that little notification bell for more Forza, Need for Speed, Gran Turismo and other racing game content. But for now let's jump into the Lexus. And let me show you just how much I love this car. Alrighty then, so here we are at the Lake Maggiore circuit, I think I'm pronouncing that right. And as you can see, I've been out for a little bit of a practice due to the bottom right hand corner. The Lexus is a little bit dinged up, but... I have to say, straight from the get-go, this track is absolutely fantastic. I really, really like it. Beautiful scenery around it in Italy, one of my favourite countries in the world. And we're going to be driving one of my favourite cars in the world. So let's get going into it right now. Now, for the first couple of laps, we're going to be keeping traction control on. Stability control is off. So, yeah, we're going to need to wait and see how it fares. Now, this is the thing I love about Gran Turismo Sport, right? You simply cannot just jump in and drive and just hood it about or anything like that. You really, really need to know what you're doing. So, I spent most of last night trying to get my steering settings to my liking and it is as close to Forza as I can replicate because that's what I am comfy with and that's what I know best and obviously I know a lot of Grand Trespo fanboys will be kicking up shit in the comments for that but anyway, <laughs> anyway everyone to their own really, everyone to their own now. I nearly done a James May there, I nearly turned into a corner which wasn't there, my bad. Now this interior some people might not like it, some people might like it, but with the colours that I've got going on right now, I think it would be better if I had a little bit of a, a white car, because this interior doesn't really clash well with the yellow outside, does it? <laughs> I mean, if it was an orange outside, then yeah, that would be absolutely fantastic, but... Mm, oh my god, whoa, whoa, whoa! Immediately wanted to get its arse out there, and that is with traction control on. That's pretty mental, man. Now, this thing does weigh quite a lot, though. So it might be that, it might be that which is causing it, but so far I'm really really liking this game guys, I really really like the handling of it, it's definitely improved over previous games, and yes, as seen in the comment section, you can move the camera around now, thank you for letting me know about that guys, uh, so the camera doesn't immediately get stuck right on the back bumper, there's a little bit of movement as you can see now which is a very, very welcome feature in my book. Now I'm a little bit disappointed in the actual track list and the overall car list itself. Don't get me wrong, there is some amazing cars like this one right here and some of my favourite cars that I haven't made it into Forza like this and some other cars that I'm going to be driving very, very soon. But I think there was talks about like a 500 car DLC God knows how much that is going to cost, seriously, if they charge us for it, that's going to be pretty mental because they should be in from the start. Granted, these cars are absolutely fantastic and well detailed, I've got to give them props for that, but yeah, we've only got 180 cars, and it's around about the same as Project Cars 2, and yeah, that's why I loved Gran Turismo, man, it had a lot of diversity in, like, cool little key cars and stuff like that, so... Yeah, I'd love to see them return, but anyway, this is a Lexus review, <laughs> not an actual Gran Turismo game review, I, I might do that further down the line, but I am just in love with this car, seriously. Uh, my friend Merrick, shout out to you man, he's actually just got one of these in white, so that's the guy from the Lamborghini Murcielago ride along video that I got uh, in Ignition, so big thanks again for that man, and I cannot wait to see your Lexus at the next Tartan Tarmac, if you're bringing that, because he's a very lucky guy, he actually owns a Dodge Viper, he recently picked that up as well, he recently picked that up as well, English Frank, there we go, <laughs> but yeah, he owns a Dodge Viper, the Lexus, I'm 
Porsche Cayenne, I believe. Also a 911R and a couple of other cars. So very lucky guy. Very lucky guy. But yeah, again, he is a good guy, and he's not a he's not a douchebag like some other rich people with some amazing, amazing cars. He is a genuine down to earth guy. This corner is so good. Seriously, just the little downhill bit there, man. It kind of reminds me of the carousel from the Nurburgring, kind of mixed with like the corkscrew a little bit. It's got this sort of Elevate, elevation change of the corkscrew and the sort of what's the what's the thing what's the what's the word the pitch I would say is kind of like a good description I would say of the corner but yeah <laughs> I mean it's it's a hell of a good track overall but the car I think it is time to turn the traction control off and see what we could do in terms of getting sideways but anyway let's see if we can get it sideways now I've changed it to the other way around this time, like the correct way, and we immediately get sideways back there. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I drove the Jag F type the other night just as a little benchmark for rear wheel drive cars in the game, and that oh, was a bit of a handful, I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of a handful, which is, ooh, as to be expected by Jags, because they are oversteering buggers, but I think it's just the weight of this thing which is helping me because it is kind of digging the rear end of the car into the ground whereas the Jag, since it is considerably lighter than this, okay, you still get this sort of project cars to sort of veering off into the wall if you're not careful. And that's why I like this game because you really, really need to get on and off the throttle while you're in mid-drift. You can't just do a Forza and just mash it all the time. But in a way, it does actually remind me a little bit of Drive Club. You know, Sony's older racer. Now, obviously that's more of an arcade game, but it does have its sim sort of implements in there. And it's kind of the same with this. A lot more on the sim side, obviously, because it is Gran Turismo. But for controller players and just like the game in general, you can feel a little bit more arcade this time. That was a not bad one. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> a little twitchy, I must admit, it is a little bit twitchy. Right, coming down to the corkscrew sort of carousel. That's what we should call it, the Italian corkscrew. Cor corkscrew? I did I say that right? I'm not too sure. My mind's just frazzled. <laughs> the Italian corkscrew carousel. There we go. Fourth gear into this long left-hander. Oh, that was nice. Like putting butter on toast. Nice and smoothy. There we go. <laughs> oh man, I mean, you really need to get used to this. You really, really do need to get used to this. Oh, love the back end of this car as well. Can we just talk about the looks a second? I know we have talked about it already, but just look at the thing, man. I mean, there's obviously a lot of inspiration from the LFA on the sides and in the front. The rear end kind of harks back to like the older SCs of Lexus's past, in my opinion. Like the SC300 and stuff like that, it kind of looks a little bit like that. But yeah, it's so nice looking, really, really nice looking. Now, if you had to ask me which would I take, an F-Type R Coupe or an LC500? <laughs> I mean, if you asked me like a year ago or something, or like maybe a couple of years ago when this car wasn't out, I'd obviously take the F-Type, but this thing is seriously giving the F-Type a good run for its money on the looks department because, god damn, I mean, <laughs> as I've shown you in the ignition video, I'll leave a link in the description below, me and Andy were kind of gobbing and slobbering all over the place at the white one that was there, just, mm, bellissimo, bellissimo, and that, that's, that's a brilliant word because we're on an Italian track, yes, bellissimo, okay, I'm not really as good at drifting on the outside view, but we're giving it a bash, a little bit of a handbrake. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Getting a wee bit used to it now, man. But overall, I'm really liking this game so far, guys. Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get a wee conversation going. Uh, have you got the game? What do you like about it? What is your favourite features? And what is your favourite car? I know a lot of people are complaining that it is kind of stripped out right now, but fingers crossed they do add some more things in. So overall, I enjoyed the hell out of this Lexus in Gran Turismo Sport. As I said, it's a great game, just wish there was a wee bit more to it, but the handling feel and the fact that you just can't jump in and just be a drifting god 
is really, really good. It's nice and refreshing from Forza. It's nice to have something where you need to put your mind to it. And the Lexus, fantastic, fantastic car. And if you're looking for quite a good drifter in GT Sport, then I'd recommend this thing. Definitely would. But anyway, guys, as I said at the start, if you are brand new around here, then make sure to subscribe and also hit that little notification bell. I also want to mention my Patreon page. It is down in the description below. Thank you very much to everyone that has actually went on there. I will be updating that very, very soon. And I'm not forcing that in your face, guys, like other YouTubers. I have actually got a job, so this is just for like wee extra donations. If you are feeling fan dabby dozy. But if you want to keep up to date with me outside of YouTube, then I have got Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. All the links are in the description yet again. As always, thank you very much for the support. You are all awesome. I love the community we have here on the channel. But for now, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you in my next video. Bye-bye.